these names are way too big for me. There's just too many of them. Oh, this is <laughs> the Kraken. Oh, sorry. Yes. Geralt's usually so stingy with the details. Jekyll. Uh, and then what happened? Brilliant. He died. Oh. Yeah, he's fine. <laughs> Look. Look, did you want to go See, told you. He was on. See? Oh. Ugh. <laughs> oh. You might want to lay off the centra nail. Clear head. You promised it. I will not suffer tonight, sober, just because you hid your sausage in the wrong order. <laughs> I'm not killing that you. That is brilliant. Not over the petty scores of men. Yes, as a witcher. Oh no. Right, so stick close to me. Look my oh. finger and meat. Can't have anyone finding out oh. actually are. Geralt of Rivia, the mighty witcher! Oh, shit. Yeah. I haven't seen you since the play. Good times, Mousex. But that pimply ass, I'd remember anywhere. Well, <laughs> uh, uh, ah, Geralt. Uh. Forgive me, my lord. This happens all the time it's true he has the face of a cat and a coward <laughs> but truth be known he was kicked in the balls by an ox as a child what, that's <laughs> true <laughs> apologies lioness <laughs> queen calante of sintra oh <laughs> wait is this time apologies noble sirs few upstart townships in the south need a reminding who was queen. Time travel? Like time displacement? Good for one's blood and humours. Yeah. Remain. Dryads. Dryads. Dara! I'm so glad you're alive. Is he going to be all right? Bite down on that. He's, he's, he's going to need to go through a hallway. True. Never mind. The waters of Brokelan are potent. Hmm. Never mind. All newcomers to the forest must. Normally, you would bind it very, very quickly and keep from tearing any ligaments in this muscle. No, that's not true. She ordered it. After Phil of Andrew's uprising. She wouldn't do that. She would. Soldiers. They lost when they did it. Killing, raping. It's a lineage you need to accept. They lost the hardest one. They were swinging babies from their legs, smashing their heads in. Jesus, Jenny Mac. I was the only one left because I hid. I should have saved them. Or fought and died. No, live to tell their tale. And you were here. So this happens in the past. Damn this cursed thing. Let us soon see this knight out in armor. As would I. Indeed. <laughs> Tell me, how does a witcher find himself at my daughter's wedding feast dressed like a... <laughs> Poor sir. I'm protecting the bard from vengeful royal cuckolds. <laughs> <laughs> Idiots. A lot of them. Still, I'm glad of your... <laughs> Get to the center, get to the center. Move to the center of the carriage and away from all the blades. Jeez. Stay inside. Criminy. Jabbers. It's an invisible? <laughs> Who she serve, the king or the queen? <laughs> She's gonna be dehydrated before she's out soon enough. Stop screaming!
This war could bring salt to a battle. She's bitter because she never got the chance to choose. No destiny is intervened on her daughter's behalf. That she may get a chance to choose. Can't you do anything? You are a sorcerer. Apparently this is more powerful. This chaos and more just pure emotion. Do you believe in destiny now? <laughs> Kinda have to. They wrecked my house. <laughs> He's a literal home wrecker. <laughs> You're not gonna stab him again, thing, are you? <laughs> that would be some shit. This is destiny. <laughs> Uh, she has to carry that. She has to carry that burden. There's blood on her hands too now. Someone come making sand castles on that beach. This is very inappropriate for me to say cause of the death, but maybe a bit deeper grave, but still sad. <laughs> That's sweet. And he was like, she's like, you knew, you. The twelfth bell has not yet rung. What has happened? I think your blessing of this marriage has fulfilled a destiny. The curse has been lifted. That certainly is a surprise. He can go. <coughs> I think destiny has fucked her. Oh, you. Oh, shit. What? Fuck. <laughs> yeah, I'll just, I'm gonna just head out. Don't take that chance. But we let them. Mind yourself. So that's why she is not affected by the motion. Two birds are rare birds in courts like this. It transcends the ability of the other waters. In back. And more likely poison. Glen Forest. They can read the entrails. Damn it. Much like how you can read a bird's entrails. He lives! Ah. Come on, get 
moving! Jeez, the ash. This destiny is too powerful for you and you. As much as I hate to admit it. She is bound to Gerald, and she can never forget him. Oh. Symbol of the episode. But what does it mean? So where do I begin? Got the blue book back again? Well, that clarified anyway for me the whole timeline discrepancy. Now we know that there is actually a sort of back and forth element where we know where we know Gerald's story is happening back in back in time when he's meeting with Dandelion, and as a result, it's, it explains why he, I know there's such there's such a big difference between the Queen and the and Ciri and Yennefer. It's like this seems all so strange to be happening at the same time, but also not at the straight same time. And here's a bit of clarification: happened in the past, the other stuff is happening. In between that past and Siri is the current sort of present day ish sort of thing. And actually explained this, and for me anyway, the whole bond between Siri and Gerald. The notion of the law surprise it is a interesting narrative device. The, the, the fact that they used time to actually inter interplay between Siri's arc and Gerald's arc. The fact that the fact that time has has no pro has no control over the, li the lives of the characters. How the, how in the past we can, there can be assumptions of he doesn't know what lies ahead of him, but we look to the future and realize Siri knows what, knows what she, where she's going and that there is some connection between her and Geralt. As much as I despise fate and destiny, that there is a definite need for these characters to meet together. It is important for them to really, to really grow into who they're meant to be. Siri here grows into the fact that, up with the fact that, yes, she she has been more openly confronted with the cruelty of her grandmother's nature as anyone else, the cruelty of her family's nature. That she needs to overcome it and, in effect, become a stronger person. And the only way she can do that is by fulfilling her destiny with Gerald, a destiny that's so powerful that overrides. The the power of these uh, of the dwellers within the forest. This destiny is powerful across time and space, across, uh, between characters. It's almost, it's almost roping in Yennefer in there as well. Did anyone find it weird how, when they got to pull that, that arrow out of the guy's leg, they didn't immediately, you know, cut around it and extract the arrowhead? Or normally, as you just sort of you sort of push it through a leg, so that it comes out the jagged, jagged grips don't don't pull that leg muscle or ligament. And I guess it's superseded by the fact that you need that they have magic, so it's like pull it out, put the magic on, boom, healed. Uh, got, gotta say, I love the queen. I think I think she's actually brilliant. Um, that might be the last we see of her because you know she's either dead or. It's in flashbacks, but we've already seen the flashbacks. But she's kind of like an Amazon queen, so it's like Queen Hippolyta up in here. Um, but man, does she need to work on her diplomacy. I mean, all the guys are going to be like, pass, no, we don't need you. Here is like, it's like, Nilfgaard, Nilfgaard, scum stinking of the entire map. Yeah, right. That's going to come back and bite you in the ass, you know that. Speaking of characters who came back, Dandelion, hurrah! It's, I, I honestly hope we see more adventures where it's where they actually team up together because they're <laughs> they actually have really good chemistry. I think they, the characters have good chemistry. They sort of bounce off like, like, why, why the hell am I close? Ah, about that, they are going to be dressing like this. Why am I dressing up like this? You kind of need to protect me. Why are you dressed up like that? I'm protecting this guy from me, from the cuckolded husbands. Oh, yeah, he's he's that guy, is he? So I think, I think the episodes with their paired up, I think, are my favorite ones. I'm talking about Yennefer, how there's still a interconnected path between Gerald, Ciri, and and Yennefer, even though it was more focused on Gerald and Ciri. 
it's interesting how they both have this all of them seem to be perhaps growing disdain for frivolity and royalty and pomp how these royals seem to think they can get away with anything they they're trying to like we're trying to do our best for the world we're trying to save as many people as we can but then we get but then there's like there's these assholes who are impeding us of course we must also take into account Yennefer um, her disdain that she's built up for her, the royal family, as, as we can see by, their, by the fact that she's just totally uninterested and uninvested in this mother and her daughter and the politics of the court. She's been forced to become a sec, some sort of secondary power behind the throne, some sort of, some sort of pawn to get, keep things in motion, but she's never really affecting any any major change any permanent change and no doubt this has probably sapped her motivation she has lost any desire to help others to become more powerful because what else can she do she's limited by the effects of others and she doesn't seem to be appreciated by anyone even the mother seems to just describe her as like a tool to be used get us out of here we just we get us out of here you useless witch so it's, and it's no surprise, that's something shared similarly with Gerald Rivia. He also feels a sort of disdain for her, just not really, not really disdain, but apathy. He just, they don't, both seem to just not care because they don't have anything to drive them. And this, and this drive comes from the appearance of Siri and their interactions with one another. From what I can, from what I've seen, the next episode is when the two actually interact. And, I, and it's going to be great motivation for the character, because both have now have a need to find a reason to live outside of mere survival. With the Witcher and Yennefer, both have a have some things have things that are, have elements that are both so common with one another that it's it's beneficial to them. That they can be like, yes, I recognize this this lack this unfulfilling life we live. This, this this destructive life we have to live and we need to do something about it and this this carefully ties together the notions of fate and destiny that prevail throughout the entire episode the fact, uh, the fact that, that Yennefer also failed to protect a young princess uh, in the same way Gerald failed to save a young princess they can now combine their efforts to say we can protect this girl and we can raise her to be, to be better we can we can help her, not mold her, but it's effectively enforce a new policy on her on her lifestyle. You need to be better than what raised you. And and that has a good potential build up. I think that's this is what the series is. It's good build up. It's good establishing establishment and world building and good lore and good lore making. It knows how to properly tie these characters together. Not just say like, here's a, here's a random quest these guys found themselves on and they suddenly came across one another and helped each other out uh, offhandedly, um, coincidentally. They just helped each other out coincidentally. No, no, here it's actually saying they are, they are thematically tied, they're they have sort of functions within the plot, but they're also come also have ties to each other that bind their characters. It's a point where if you do see them together, it makes a great character interaction. Because we we fully defined the characters before they get to the, into the interactions, it makes for an altogether better experience for what we watch. So while this first series, I feel like yeah, even now I feel is a bit dragging a bit. I feel is a bit dragging in places bits of comic relief good bits of action and some interesting character it needs to pick up for the next season to be more proactive to be more to be more uh, life to be more in lively more lively basically pick up the pace of the of their interactions and pick up the pace of of you know world changing events give us a, like an overarching plot what's what's this deal to go and deal with Nilfgaard is there going to be some sort of climactic battle doubt it 
but it'd be cool to have some sort of interactions and I like to see how this this grand sort of knight wizard cleric person is chasing after this other wizard who was befriending Gerald. The one who saved Sears life. I'm glad to see he's alive. He definitely deserved to live. And and I, I found this I found this out on a bit of during the editing process. The sack of of Kimorin. And I didn't realise this when I first watched it, I thought, oh, okay, whatever. But wow, you know, this actually makes it a bit more climactic. Gerald is is the last Witcher. The last of his kind. He and this we're seeing in the previous episode, they can be killed. They can be easily wiped out by underestimating the monsters they fight, or going into events with the, to conflict with the wrong attitude. That's helping to define why Gerald is actually a more defined character, and define Gerald's character even more. The reason he lives is because he's so diverse in his, in, in his execution. He can be this this diplomat, he can be this guy who fights for the right, and this man who uses the correct tactics. He is enforcing his own for certain sense of justice, but it's also a good sense of justice. It's an unbiased. Here, he, even though he befriended the queen, even though the queen is very, is very approachable, it's a, he understands like no, this is curse. This is magic. You can't really blame this poor man for wanting to take, wanting to hone in on the on the law of surprise. You can, and I I fight by his side because it is a, a, a matter of destiny. I mean, <laughs> that huge explosive cr of climax is pretty pretty self evident on its own that destiny has its own plans. If not with Siri, with this all-powerful tree being able to be, being unable to overwrite destiny. Did I say destiny too much in this season? In this uh, in this review, take a, take a don't take a shot for every time I say destiny. You'll be dead by the end of it. And it's effectively trying to show off how these characters can grow in certain ways. Siri needs to be. Needs to be stronger, but also different than her mother, her grandmother. Siri needs to be strong and be different from her. Siri, she needs to be strong and but different from her grandmother. Yennefer needs to be proactive and find something to believe in. Gerald needs to be needs to redeem himself in his own eyes and to find his own to find his own sense of community. They all do. They all need that sort of. So they're grouping together, this little party, this little band of, of rogues and ne'er-do-wells and throwaways. They need to sort of combine with each other and say, we can fix each other. Even if that's, even if it's only in the short term, even if it might take years, it makes for an interesting potential. And I hope that the series can actually match that potential.